Anything that abdicates critical thinking, I think is detrimental to humanity in a, in a big way. Like a creeping capability that's coming ever more into every moment of our lives. It's going to take a lot of willpower and awareness to avoid reductions of human critical thinking and cognition. AI is already passing PhD level science questions at a rate better than specialists in the individual subject, but in all subjects at once. AI is already passing PhD level science questions at a rate better than specialists in the individual subject, but in all subjects at once. Where's it going to be six months? I mean, you said six months. Where's it going to be in a month, two months, three months, and let alone six months? What do you think the collective or the mass impact of a technology like this is going to be on human cognition and potential? Boston Consulting Group did a really interesting study with about 800 of their consultants, mm. um, where they gave them access to, um, it, in fact, it was OpenAI's model, ChatGPT, um, a little while ago. And they, they then studied their ability to solve problems in a business context. It's a fascinating report, because they said that where problems required deep critical thinking, the problem with people who used AI is that they would abdicate responsibility for thinking. Mm -hmm. And that was okay until it was critical thinking, really adversarial critical thinking that was required. And then their performance degraded by 19%. Wow. So it was actually worse than they were before. Mm -hmm. And it, it put me down that rabbit hole of, mm -hmm. okay, well, exactly where does critical thinking come into play in business, in life, in general? Um, and I think the risk, and you're already seeing it if any of you have got a school-aged child, um, mine's grown up and left home now, but are talking to friends who have, doing the homework for them using AI, and then the teachers using AI to try and detect when the kids are using AI to do the homework. Anything that abdicates critical thinking, I think is detrimental to humanity in a, in a big way. Um, so that's what I would watch, is try to make sure that people who use it don't abdicate responsibility or thinking. Use it as a partner. I think when you use it, not like a glorified search engine, but as a highly technical, very clever partner, um, then it's gonna be very powerful. But where's the line? Because simple example, Google Maps, you know, takes you wherever you want to go. You, you just press the dropped pin, it's home, off you go, wherever you are in the world. You don't get an atlas out and plot your route. You don't, you know, none of that. It's you know, Google Maps is intelligent because it tells you where you know, blockages are and then you reroute. And, and so your brain is, you, I, I think I was talking to someone the other day and I said, well, you know, do you know which way to go? Well, I mean, I'll just put on Google Maps and they'll find it for me. And that's all well and good, but that's taking away some cognition mm -hmm. in that area. And then when you say, but in areas where critical thinking really matters, where's the line? Because mm. it's sort of like a creeping capability that's coming ever more into every moment yeah. of our lives. So where is the line? Google Maps is a great example. Um, you can think of a couple of very good examples of people ending up in a river when the river wasn't on the Google Maps and then it ends up in the story. Um, critical thinking would suggest it's probably a bad idea to drive in the river, but people just obey the instructions. Um, or if you're out and about and you drop your phone and it broke and that was your only directions and you're in the woods, for example, and you're immediately lost. Yeah. So I think that until you've had those sorts of life experiences, it's, it's really easy to over rely on technology and not apply that critical thinking, the what ifs. So what experience if can... means you have a contingency. Is think, that what you're saying? I think experience is really important in that regard. Um, and I think that there's a lot of young people in AI right now, which is amazing, fantastic, um, the entrepreneurs of the world and, and more power to them. But I do think we also ought to wrap some of that experiential critical thinking. I'd love to say when I was 18 that I was clever, I had all the experience. Of course you don't, you think you do. Mm -hmm. But when you're in your 50s, you realise that actually life experience is really, really important. I, I agree with you, Matt, that the technology should be considered to be a, a partner and to augment our capabilities. But when we look at the direction of how models are being trained and reasoning models, 
and how quickly humans adapt and how we all have a tendency to take shortcuts and be lazy, it's going to take a lot of willpower and awareness to avoid those unpleasant statistics about the re reductions of human critical thinking and cognition. And I don't think we will. I think that there'll be um, a divide. Mm. People who figure that out mm. and use it to their advantage and become richer, more powerful, yeah. more famous, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And there'll be, as ever, the, a, a large mass group of people who don't understand it and don't use it and do abdicate responsibility for thinking. Mm. Um, but ever has that been the way with technological advancement and innovation? I drive a car that's got a, a combustion engine still, not an electric one. Um, I know how it works principally. Could I fix it if it broke down on the side of the road? Probably not. Um, I've abdicated the responsibility of that to a specialist. But ah, here's the difference. So yes, of course you can walk or you can run, but you can't drive. And the scary thing is that these models can think, and that is apart from consciousness, and that's a whole other debate, <laughs> one of the only things that makes us truly who we are. And I suppose that's where, you know, as people often say, this technology is not like other technologies before. We can try and draw equivalencies to maybe to the internet or electricity, but it's, it's not. And, and that's where my concern is. Uh, some scientific pundits are calling this period we're in right now the great acceleration, because it's mm. the speed of change of AI is unlike anything I've seen in my 35 years in tech. What skills do you think that people need who work in this space, Matt? What soft skills or intellectual skills do they need to respond adequately? Um, no, no person is an island in this technology. Teaming is essential. So the people who have the best communication skills, the best team building skills, the best leadership skills, and the critical thinking skills, are going to be the winners um, and I think also people who are a bit more artistic because one of the challenges in this technology is, is you're limited almost by your imagination so, so the older you get the less your imagination you get more boxed in um, so I think that younger entrepreneurs that come into this space need to be listened to quite carefully with bright new ideas um, and that needs to be nurtured um, so I think diversity extends not just male female but age um, beliefs, artistry, um, scientific understanding, more diverse the better. There's so much new territory to look at, right? It's almost like we're re-exploring the globe, right? And I think that natural inquisitiveness, an ability to try things, fail, try again, yeah, I think that those are really important skills that we need to nurture. Yeah, you should put that on every CV filter, <laughs> curiosity. Um, yeah, as long as you've got curiosity, the chances are you're going to be doing better in this environment at the moment. So then to develop such a strong AI literacy, there's an argument that should be put into schools and that should be instilled at a very young age. Um, but I don't know that that's happening on a, on a large scale yet. Some countries it's happening more than other countries yeah. um, where STEM is more popular because it's fundamentally a STEM science, technology, engineering, mathematics subject. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I concur, I agree. I don't think we are approaching this app appropriately with, with our younger people in mind. When should it start in a child's life? There's been a lot of research in the development of critical thinking in children. Um, when they start to have a sense of self um, and, and think their own way outside of the parental influence, um, I think that that's the point when they become self-curious and start to disagree with their parents um, and they're they stepping into that discovery. So really young. And I think in countries like China, I think you'll find that adoption and education is much sooner than it is here. And there is an opportunity for us to take the best of that and figure out how we can nurture our own next generation so that we can be prepared for what comes next.